Star Wars historians are well aware of the outcry and publicity battle that followed the announcement of the Walt Disney Corporation's planned new theme park, Disney's America. The close proximity to the Manassas National Battlefield Park did not help the call of Disney. There is a vast array of videos about the theme park and the reasons for its demise by the Disney community. However, often forgotten and overlooked is the fact that this was not the first time a theme park tried to encroach on the historic Bull Run Battlefield. Twenty years before Disney, in 1973, the Marriott Corporation planned for the creation of Great America. In 1973, the Marriott Corporation had obtained 513 acres of land near the Manassas Park. The plan was to use 80 acres for a theme park, Great America. In addition, there was plans for a hotel, shopping center, and a 185-acre industrial park. The theme park was to include six historic areas, a New England seaport, a New Orleans French market, Southwestern region, frontier Yukon, a rural town, and turn of the century Midwest. The park map from the California park gives a vague indication of what the park may have looked like. The plan called for rides, musical productions, and craft displays. The centerpiece of the park was a 350-foot tall observation tower. All these plans required a rezoning of the land from agriculture to commercial and change to the heights permitted on the land. Furthermore, to provide access, a new interchange on Interstate 66 was needed. While Marriott had looked at a number of site selection criteria, the proximity of the battlefield was not among them. Without consulting the Manassas National Battlefield Park, Marriott concluded that its theme park's biggest impact on the park would be more people visiting and engaging the historical park. Based on its considerations, Marriott started to negotiate with the Prince William Board of County Supervisors, which welcomed the arrival of such a project and the possible tax income it would generate for the county. The county had seen explosive population growth in the past decade and needed more tax money to provide its residents with basic services such as schools and sanitation. In response to the plans, groups in favor and opposition formed. The opposition group, Prince William League for the Protection of Natural Resources, questioned the benefits of Samaria development. In part, the worry was a slippery slope argument that once approved, the Marriott project would draw more development that could increasingly impact the battlefield. The impact was not just limited to the added traffic, noise and pollution, but also the visual impact that the tall structures, including the park's centerpiece, would have. The opponents remembered the terribleness of the Gettysburg Tower in that regard. The park leadership remained in the dark about Marriott's plans until they read a big announcement on the front page of the Washington Post. 
At that point, Superintendent Russell Berry and the National Park Service approached Marriott for, in for more information. They made it clear that the park was not going to support the plan, but had not yet determined whether to oppose. In March 1973, Marriott and park leaders met and the park outlined its specific concerns about the tall tower, pollution, access to the theme park, and the need for Marriott to provide picnic and camping facilities to reduce pressure on the battlefield park. The Park Service desired to avoid the public clamoring between opponents and supporters that was increasingly turning hysterical. The Park Service desired to maintain the appearance of the irresponsible party in the struggle, and more importantly, avoid potentially damaging political conflicts. Siding against Marriott could appear as an intervention in local government affairs. An important question raised was about the historical significance of the Marriott land. There were calls to incorporate the Marriott plot into the park. Among its supporters was former Superintendent Francis Wilson. The main reason that the track had historic significance was because Robert E. Lee had established his headquarter and a signal station on a hill in the western part of the land during the Second Battle of Bull Run, which contributed to the rebel victory. Coincidentally, the National Capital Region's Land Use Coordinating Office was looking at the very plot of land at the very same moment in time for inclusion in the park. With the Park Service waiting for detailed site plans, the opposition decided to take their cause to Congress. Local Civil War roundtables approached lawyer Frederick Simpich to appeal to the House Subcommittee on National Parks and Recreation. The hope was for the committee to hold hearings determining whether a theme park would have a negative impact on the Manassas National Battlefield Park. The committee gladly took up the issue and decided to investigate. However, the only issue investigated was the impact on the battlefield park, as zoning and use permits were local issues beyond Congress's purview. On April 3, 1973, the committee faced a packed hearing room with both sides in attendance. The National Park Service Director, Ron Walker, faced significant criticism from the committee when he refused to take a side for lack of sufficient information, with some even questioning if he understood how to protect the parks under his direction. Meanwhile, Superintendent Barry changed jobs. His replacement, Richard Hoffman, continued the neutral line of the National Park Service on the matter of the Marriott theme park. The Prince William County officials rushed their approval of the park. There were water and sewer issues that needed addressing. Then, the Planning Commission had to look into rezoning of the property. While the Planning Commission supported rezoning, there remained questions that needed answers, such as access roads, water quality protection, and a buffer to the battlefield park. Furthermore, the city hoped Marriott would hold off on hotel construction until demand required it. The mad dash process was in part out of fear that Marriott might walk away from the project entirely. After all, Prince William County had only been Marriott's second choice after local opposition in Howard County, Maryland had forced the relocation. Once Marriott had provided clarification, the county supervisors unanimously approved the project. Undeterred, the Prince William League for the Protection of Natural Resources decided to file a lawsuit, claiming the county meeting on April 5 had not granted sufficient time to project opponents. Nine opponents had spoken at the hearing, in contrast to the 12 proponents. The project grounded to a halt, and the county legal advisor observed that the rezoning and special use permits were invalid as the April 1973 meeting was insufficiently advertised. While a special legislation by the Virginia legislature could overcome the zoning failure, it was not so easy with a special use permit. 
Marriott offered to construct a sewage treatment facility on its land to alleviate some concerns. The access road too promised problems as the Federal Highway Authority approved a new interchange, but was not going to provide funding for its construction. With the issues mounting, and parks also under construction in Illinois and California, Marriott decided to abandon the Virginia Park. The National Park Service never had to make a stand one way or the other. The park remained protected from encroaching development for the moment. However, new controversies surrounding the very plot quickly followed and remained an issue until the Marriott track was integrated into the park. At the same time, the struggle over Marriott's Great America was a rehearsal for a fight in the future. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.